Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. I hope that you are all well. This is where I talk about the books that I'm reading. I like to read diverse books and I highlight Canadian literature. If you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my new subscribers. I've had a bit of a jump in the last few days. So thanks to everyone for literally sticking around. Um, and for those who have been here for a while, thank you. Thank you for still being here too. I love having all of you as part of this community. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I finished in the month of February and we will see where I end up with my enormous TBR stack um, that exploded with my February haul. I will leave that linked below. Um, it exploded to 1,506 books. So today we will see if we can bring it down a bit. Um, below 1,500 is good, that's where I started, but below 1,496 is even better since that is the lowest that it's been so far. So far, probably being the key words here. Um, I have put these books um, that I read in February in different categories. I have Canada Reads books, um, books that I read for Black History Month. I did a buddy read and I read a romance. Um, yeah, a Christmas book actually. Um, is that weird for February? I don't know. Uh, but I also have um, some more nonfiction and fiction books. So we have a few things to get to. So let's begin um, with, the, with the books that I finished for Canada Reads. Um, I'm not going to talk about these in great detail because I already did um, a shortlist announcement and winner prediction or a shortlist reaction, I guess, and winner prediction where I talk about all of these. So if you are interested, I will leave a link to that video below um, and I'll put it in the description box. So check that out. Um, okay, so Canada Reads uh, takes place March 4th to the 7th. So I am looking forward to seeing how it, it kind of all goes down. Um, I do want to list these books here though because um, they will help with the TBR countdown. Um, so Meet Me at the Lake. This is by Carly Fortune. Um, this is the first ever romance book to be part of Canada Reads. So it'll be interesting to see how far it goes in the debates. And this brings the TBR to 1505. Um, next up is Denison Avenue by Christina Wong, and it's illustrated by Daniel Inez. Um, this book can be read either way. One way is the text, the other way is the same story but told through the illustrations. And this puts the TBR at 1504. And the next book is one um, I wanted to like more than I did. Um, it's The Future by Catherine LaRue, and this is translated from the French by Susan Uriu. Um, I do love that there is a translated book um, on the short list um, because that helps me. I don't read very ma many um, translated books in Canada. Um, and that brings the TBR down to 1503. So we are getting there. Uh, the next category of books that I have are the ones that I read for Black History Month. And all three of these are nonfiction, which I think is interesting because I have several books on my shelves that are fiction that could have potentially been read for this, but I seem to have been drawn to nonfiction this month. Um, first is Policing Black Lies by Robin Maynard. Um, this book has been on my radar since it was first published um, because this is a topic that is not talked about nearly enough in Canada. Usually when Canadians hear about or talk about these issues, it's from an American perspective. So it can feel like these are issues that don't really pertain to Canada and Canadians. And we can have empathy for our Southern neighbors, you know, who, who have this problem, but we don't need to look at ourselves. And this book, points out that the issues are all too real right here in Canada too, and how they have been overlooked or ignored. It looks back to the time of slavery and shows how anti-blackness has permeated Canadian systems in a variety of ways. It is very thorough. Um, it covers topics such as the justice system, 
um, limited access to employment and um, public safety. It also talks about how uh, black women are targeted and how black children are treated within child protection services and in the school system. Um, the racism that exists within immigration was eye-opening to me. Um, and I really liked how Robin Maynard paralleled anti-blackness in Canada to the colonization of Indigenous peoples. I, I thought that that was brilliant um, for a number of reasons, mainly because um, Indigenous issues are such a hot topic in Canada, rightfully so. Um, but helping people see the similarities, I think, is very clever. And this is such an important book, and I really hope that more Canadians will read it. Um, it is more academic, and you can tell Robin Maynard has done, done her research for this. Um, so this is not a light read, but it is, I think, an, an essential read to understand where um, Canada truly is when it comes to racism. So this brings the TBR to 1502. Next up is one of my favorite Canadian authors, um, Disorientation by Ian Williams. Another important read, especially when it comes to black people in Canada. Um, where Robin Maynard's book was more academic, Disorientation brings the personal aspect and it covers a lot of the same topics but just through storytelling and sharing experiences, um, Ian Williams' personal experience. So this is a collection of essays that, like all of Ian Williams' books, has an important uh, structure. It's divided into three parts. The first part kind of sets the whole book up and it defines what he is calling disorientation. And I loved how he does that. Um, and then shows the disorientation like throughout the rest of the book. Um, the second part focuses on different experiences that Ian Williams has had, um, especially living in different parts of the world and what that has looked like. Uh, it's also fascinating, um, especially since, um, you know, where we are, where we live, gives us new perspectives of ourselves. <coughs> the third part focuses on the black body, what it is like to have a black body, and how black bodies are perceived. Um, this is really fantastic. And because I am already a fan of Ian Williams' work, um, especially his poetry, his language and poetic prose, I think really come out in this as well. Um, this is a book that I think all Canadians, uh, but really everyone should read. Uh, this brings the TBR to 1501. The third book that I read for Black History Month was a memoir, When They Call You a Terrorist by Patrice Con Colors and Asha Bendel. Um, Patrice Con Colors is the co-founder of the Black Lives Matter movement. And in this memoir, she shares her own experiences of growing up in a poor neighborhood in Los Angeles um, with her mother and brother. And she shares the experience of her family, how they have been racialized, how they've been uh, treated by police, and what prompted Patrice, along with two others, to start the Black Lives uh, Matter movement. Um, some of the experiences that Patrice and her family go through um, are really difficult to read but they are also powerful stories of why this movement matters. Um, I do wish the book had gone into a little bit more depth um, about the movement itself, but this is certainly a book that is intense um, and definitely worth reading. So this brings the TBR back to 1500. The next book on my pile is a book that I buddy read with Michael Wurtenberg. Um, I will leave a link to Michael's channel and also the video that he did um, about our buddy read and his experience of reading this book. Um, we read Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. This is translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. I was really looking forward to reading this collection of horror stories because I had read Mariana Enriquez's collection called The Dangers of Smoking in Bed 
and I really enjoyed it. Um, plus, I had heard so many people say they liked this collection. Some even said that it was better than the dangers of smoking in bed. So Michael and I decided that we would read two stories a day and then check in every day. Uh, there are 12 stories altogether. And after reading the first two, I was like, okay, this is just the beginning. So, you know, the stories are only going to get better from here. Um, one of the stories I thought was better than the, than the other. And I was holding out hope that there would be you know, improvement um, as we went along. And this didn't really happen. Um, both Michael and I, I think we're pretty disappointed. Um, I did find that one of the stories was better than the other, you know, with each pairing that we read, but none of them out of all 12 blew me away. Um, there were about maybe three stories that I thought were good. Um, they definitely had potential and I, I thought they were okay. Um, and Michael talked about them being suggestions of stories, which I think is very accurate. Um, I was also hoping that Michael's experience might be better uh, because he was reading it in the original language. He was reading it in Spanish. And I thought, you know, maybe something is being lost in translation. Check out um, Michael's video where he talks about this and you'll see what he thinks as well. Um, I will say that I am grateful that I was buddy reading this with Michael because it allowed me to talk about how disappointing it was. Um, and because, you know, we were both kind of experiencing similar things, um, I felt like it wasn't just me. Um, I feel bad that it was Michael's first buddy read because there is nothing like buddy reading a really good book with someone and having great conversations. Uh, but I'm thinking that there is a huge possibility that the next buddy reading experience <laughs> will only be better. Um, yeah, because I've read other stories by Mariana Enriquez um, and enjoyed them, I, I did like her other short story collection. Um, I am considering picking up her novel, Our Share of Night, um, but I'm not sure. I know it's huge. So if I'm going to make that commitment, um, I want to be sure that it will be worth my time. So if you've read it, you know, please let me know what you thought of it um, and if you think it's worth me picking up. Um, and thanks again to Michael for reading these stories with me. This brings the TBR to 1499. So I am below the 1500 mark again. Yay. Um, this next book, I started before Christmas and then because life happened, um, I never really got back to it. And I thought, do I need to wait until next Christmas? You know, or can I just go ahead and have a little Christmas in February? So that's what I did. I went ahead and I read A Very Merry Bromance by Lissa K. Adams. This is the fifth book in the series. Um, can you believe I'm reading this whole series? It's it's kind of surprising to me. Um, first, because as many of you already know, I, I don't always get along with series, um, especially the further along it goes. Um, and I am still surprised by how much I actually like these books. Um, this is the Bromance Book Club series about a group of professional men who use romance novels to help them navigate their relationships and they help each other, you know. So each book focuses on a different man in the group or couple. And this one focuses on Colton, who is the country singer, and his relationship with Gretchen, which I've always thought was an unfortunate name. Um, anyway, it of course has Christmas as a theme. It takes place around Christmas. Um, and these books usually make me laugh out loud. There, there are some funny lines. Uh, this one was okay. There were, there were some things that kind of bugged me about it, but you know, I was able to overlook some of it partially um, because I don't know, maybe just because because of the type of book it is. Um, but Gretchen comes from a family with tons of money. She's never even decorated a Christmas tree um, because they had decorators 
and it was a way to I think also show the priorities of her family which was not you know family but money so Colton loves Christmas and he wants Gretchen to have um, that same love of, of Christmas and to have family support uh, you know that he has always had so some of it was okay um, but this is not my favorite in the series if you are already a fan of the series then this is you know definitely worth a read um, but I think yeah my favorites are still um, the first one and the fourth book um, so this means the TBR is sitting at 1498. Okay, I have two more nonfiction books to talk about. Um, I finally read A Mighty Heart by Marianne Pearl. This book has been sitting on my shelf for like 20 years. It's been a very long time. This is the story of how Marianne Pearl's husband, Daniel, was kidnapped and murdered by terrorists in Pakistan in 2002. This story was all over the news. I remember following it and seeing the pictures of Daniel um, and then learning that he had been, you know, killed. Reading this book now was more of a reminder of what happened. And it does give some backstory to what their lives were like and and into what happened. Um, if you remember this, then you will also remember a lot of the key players in this and see how um, it was all connected to events at the time. Marianne, uh, like Daniel, um, is a journalist and it is written that way. Um, I say that because it is not written like a grieving wife first. It, it is there, but it is more focused on the facts and the events of what happened. Um, and although this is a memoir, it feels more biographical in many ways, like someone who has researched the story and is telling it that way, like from afar, right? So Marianne does place herself in the story, but the emotional parts feel far away. Um, so this is a good book. If you are interested in this story um, or remember this story and want to, you know, get some more details and more information on it, um, then this is, this is good. And this brings the TBR to 1497. Okay, this next nonfiction book is um, Killers of the Flower Moon by David Gran. And this is being hyped right now because of the movie that came out. Um, but this is an incredible story. It surprises me that the book is not like three times bigger. Um, I feel like there's a lot left out, but then at the same time, it tells enough of the story to capture the magnitude of it. Um, this is about the Osage murders in the early 1900s in what is now Oklahoma. The Osage Nation were given land that was deemed to be worthless but it turned out that there was oil and the Osage Nation became the wealthiest people per capita in the world because of that oil. Then people started dying and the deaths were considered, you know, tragic suicides. Um, people were being shot or poisoned um, and these murders were going unsolved. And a lot of the deaths were just very mysterious. And of course, this is before DNA and the forensic technology that we have now. The FBI was in its infancy and they started investigating. And here's where the story becomes almost unbelievable because, because of the elaborate schemes that people went through to have access to this money. Um, the conspiracy was mind boggling to me. Um, there were characters that I really liked and then, well, couldn't, right? So this is just an incredible story. I do want to see the movie. Um, I just haven't had time because it's three and a half hours long, um, but I will watch it. Um, I have seen people say that you need to read the book first, which is what I prefer anyway, um, but they say that the movie will spoil the book for you. So um, I'm glad that I've already read it um, and this is definitely worth a read. So this brings the TBR back to 1496, um, which is where I was in my last wrap up. And the good news is that I have more. So I have more fiction books to talk to you about. Um, first, 
is Lily and the Octopus by Stephen Rowley. This was recommended to me by a number of people because I am a dog lover. Um, my favorite dog book is still The Art of Racing in the Rain um, by Garth Stein, who actually did blurb um, this book. It says, touching, fresh, energetic, a wonderfully moving story. Um, so Lily is a Dachshund and her human Ted, who is really Ed Flask, um, <laughs> I loved the relationship that the two of them had. The time that they spend together, you know, how Ted included Lily in his life and how just connected they were. If you are a dog owner, you will totally get that. Um, all of that I loved. I even loved how the octopus um, that Lily has is used to tell us more about Ted than Lily. Uh, and how it becomes kind of a character in itself. There were parts of the book that got a little weird. And to me, unbelievable. And that's where it lost me a bit. Um, plus, every time the dog was talking, it was capitalized, like talking, not really talking. Uh, and the capitalization kind of bugged me because I thought, why is this dog always yelling? It, it didn't really fit with who Lily was to me. And it just, it felt a bit jarring. Um, I do appreciate the character development of Ted and how he comes to terms, you know, with some things. But in the end, I was, I was kind of disappointed. Um, yeah, because I don't know, I mean, I had very high expectations and high hopes. So um, I do think it's worth a read, especially if you are a dog lover. And like I said, I, I think um, that the relationships between Lily and Ted is absolutely adorable. Um, but this didn't live up to my, to my expectations. So this brings the TBR to 1495, the lowest it's ever been. And we still have more. Um, the other fiction book that I read was a thriller, mystery thriller, by an author that um, became an autobi author for me a couple of years ago. I read The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. This was a very interesting story about a couple, um, Gabe and Pippa. They live in their dream house, but it's near a cliff. And it also happens to be where a lot of people go to take their lives. And Gabe has kind of become a local hero in a way because he has been able to talk um, every person down from taking their lives since, they, since they've moved into this house. So he works with the police and they are amazed at what he has done. Then one day there's a woman standing at the cliff and Gabe goes out to talk to her. Pippa is watching this um, from the window. So she's inside the house. She turns away for a split second and when she looks back, the woman is gone and Gabe is standing with his arms outstretched as though he has pushed her. So as the police investigate you know, who this woman is, um, some things come to light and slowly the truth is revealed. It was very intriguing, and I liked how the characters were developed. Um, I find Sally Hepworth does that very well. The, the only thing for me is I like guessing along, you know, the way in a story like this, and trying to piece things together and still being surprised. And I, I think that's the best. So I like when I haven't figured it out, but all of the pieces are there that I could have. But sometimes, which was the case here, when things are revealed, um, they are things that you could never have known because you, you know, you haven't been let in to that part of the story. So it feels like it's a convenient solution, like, oh, we'll throw this in at the end, even if it's a clever solution, but it's not one that you could ever come up with. I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but I do like that things are explained. It's just sometimes, yeah, the explanation is lacking if it seems like it came from nowhere, you know. Uh, if you've read this, let me know what you think. Um, I still really liked this and I still want to read more Sally Hepworth. Um, yeah, out of the four books that I've read by her, I think that this one has, I would say, the most thrilling storyline. Um, and this brings the TBR to 1,494. So that's where it sits for now. And we will see how things go in March. Fingers crossed, 
it will keep coming down. Um, please let me know if you have read any of these books. Uh, do we agree or do we disagree about them? Um, are you interested in reading any of these? And if so, which ones? And then let me know what were your favorite reads of February that you would recommend that you think I should read. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Thank you.